This is the Dreamers Podcast, where dreamers share their stories to inspire you. Now, join host Joe Pardo as he interviews a dreamer who's living their dreams. Welcome to the Dreamers Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Pardo, and today I am interviewing Phil and Eve Vanderpool, who are living their dream by moving to Disney World. Welcome to the show, Phil and Eve. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. So let's start by giving everybody a background about yourselves. Okay, so basically, uh, Phil and I met in 2009, and we were living in New Jersey, and we'd come to Florida for vacation, and just being in Florida, we both decided to go to Disney World. And um, at that point, we didn't have that full-blown Disney obsession. Um, but however, after that first trip, it grew. We made a second trip, and it grew. Um, we got married, had a daughter, and then really things started taking off. We bought DVC. We started coming down at the drop of a dime just because we had to come back down. And it just became so ridiculous that we decided we kind of had to just go with it and go with it in a big way. We needed to move down there. We needed to live in Florida. So we made the move to South Florida. Phil's job agreed to let him work down there. And we moved to South Florida. And then that wasn't close enough. So we had to move to Orlando. So the next goal is to move to Orlando area. And... We did that, and um, you know, basically, it's the story of how all of that progressed um, over the course of I don't know what, like three, four years. It was three years. It was relatively quick, and you really couldn't believe, you know, how how fast it happened. I mean, there there was a lot of hard work involved to do that, but uh, we were very fortunate to just be in the right place at the right time, and we had a few strategies, uh, you know, that would allow us to kind of jump on an opportunity when it came up such as, you know, constantly living below our means and, and not actually owning a home. Uh, that was very helpful because uh, it allowed us to move around constantly whenever there was an opportunity. And we eventually found a place pretty much a mile from the Magic Kingdom. We were in a position to act on it and, and work really uh, aligned for me as well. So there, there was a lot of luck involved and just a lot of being able to recognize opportunity. Before we dive deep into everything that it took to get to that point of moving to Orlando, what would you each say inspires you? Just the thought of continually moving forward. I mean, what, what we do is we pretty much we, we have the same goals in mind very, very often. One of us will come up with, with the end goal and uh, think it's crazy. And the other one will, no matter who it is, will we'll figure out ways to make that happen. And then we just bounce ideas off each other. And it's just a thrill of saying, okay, we've accomplished this. What's next? We're continually happy while we're doing it, but we always think that we, we can do better. And so it's just that thrill of, okay, what's next? Yeah, and you know, you always hear stories about people achieving their dreams. And you always say, oh, well, that's great. That's nice. But you know, you, it's, why can't it be you? There's no reason it can't be you. It, it, it should be you. It shouldn't be anyone else. It should be you. You know, you should go out and do it. Just the thought, it's thrilling. It really is thrilling just knowing that there is some luck involved, but, you know, you, you just, you just got to show up. You got to hammer away at it and focus it and you got to love the process. And so that's, that, that's one of the things that really is true. You have to love the process. You have to love the whole journey and getting there and you have to believe in it. And that's exciting to wake up each day and just, just hammer away at it and, and attack it from every angle. And really, you know, you get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I would totally agree about loving the whole process. Sometimes there's parts that you find that you don't love, but because you love the dream as a whole, you eventually find ways to make it easier and, and refine it because you love it so much. You're able to stick with it long enough to refine it down to the most simplest form. Right. And even parts that don't pan out as well as you thought, there's always a lesson to be gleaned. There's always a reason you traveled down that road. And now you know, hey, that's not it. <laughs> Go the other way. Take what you've learned. Again, it's bittersweet, but it's cliche too, but I mean, yeah. it's being able to get over the fear of failure and just be able to find out what works and what doesn't work. And failure is just another lesson that says, hey, 
that didn't work. Let's try again. Uh, let's let's retune. Definitely. So let's dive deeper into where your dream came about to move down to Disney World. Uh, well, I mean, I know for myself personally, I mean, but right before I met Eve, Eve and I basically met each other and were married within two months. Two months. Yeah. We were living very, very different lives at the time. I mean, I, I was working uh, in Manhattan. I had been working there for about, I guess, a, almost nine, ten years at the time. And, you know, it was great. It was a lot of fun, but I definitely didn't see myself as a as a Disney fan as much as I am right now until I met Eve. We we actually met one time. We had, I guess we'd, we'd known each other for about three weeks and we decided to t- take a trip to Florida. And one of the places that we decided to go since we hadn't been in a long time was Disney World. Right. And uh, we went. We remember we went to Epcot one time, and we uh, we just had fun. It's kind of one of the where the places where we we fell in love and decided to to go further on with our lives. And it was always something special to us. So as we just continued to keep coming back and kind of getting, it's a term that you always use. Yeah. She, so it says we're all in basically oh, before we on. actually went all in. We just can decided that we loved it in the area, and we just wanted to continue to be able to do that every day. You know, we were also living like Phil touched upon in the beginning. He had been working in Manhattan for 10 years. I was working for a corporation um, in marketing, uh, in fashion. Uh, we we're going to the city. We both lived right across the river from the city in uh, Weehawk in New Jersey. We were just, we were living fast paced lives. It was fun. But, you know, we had been doing the restaurants, out to clubs, lounges, whatever, for for a long time. We were living that way for a long time. And it was getting old you know and we were getting older and we were like ah you know this is just there's just it's it's such a fast-paced way of life and when we went down to disney world we just found something very pure something that we hadn't felt since we were younger since we were children and now we're adults and enjoying that and looking for something different and inspired and pure and that's what we found and that's how it made us feel every time we were down there and around others that felt the same way it felt like we, we belonged yeah there's a big community aspect as well too i mean right. just seeing it as you know okay it's, it's a theme park and on the outside it it, it is crazy you I mean you have to, have to admit it sounds crazy it is it is nuts to get into something as as much as disney fans are or the hardcore ones anyway but there was that sense of community of we want to be a part of this so i think is what what drove us to, to mm-hmm. take the steps and do what it took to get down here. So how long have you been married? Uh, just under five years. And you said you got married within two months of knowing each other? Within two months, yeah. I think that was about it, July. Right. Yeah, about two months. We met in July of 2009, went on, well, I moved in after a week, went on vacation after a month. About two and a half months. Two and a half months we got married. Wow. <laughs> then my next question is supposed to be how your dream was received by family, but I- I'm more curious to see how your dream was received. Um, well, how how getting married was received by fa- by your families. Uh, they honestly didn't care. It was kind they of crazy. They weren't either. shocked. They weren't surprised. <laughs> it was just, oh, okay. Okay. I had a feeling. I guess in the, the months leading up to everything, we had talked about each other a lot to our respective families. And so they may have gotten the feeling that this was different, but right. And we knew having been in previous relationships, of course, and out in the world for some time that, you know, it's right, it's right. And you just, you just go with it, with everything you have and those same traits that, that led us to make the decision to get married quickly and so on and so forth kind of lead us to really um let our passions drive us and fuel us and i i feel like that translated yeah i mean if one of us says we're gonna do something that's kind of almost a a dare (laughs) at that point and the other one holds us to it so yeah yeah for sure uh so wait let me just clarify for our listeners because i i'm having trouble You, you met each other and within two months you were married two and a half months we were married yeah okay oh because it sounded like when you just described it that you had known each other for a long period of time oh no and or dated before that got engaged and then within two months you were like you know what let's just get married right now no 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 okay so it was two months from start to wedding rings yeah no we had we had the same circle of friends but like never met and um i suddenly just met we met at a barbecue um 
July 3rd barbecue, actually, um, in 2009, and that yeah. was it. By October, we were married. And, and, and did you mention how old you both were? Um, I was 30, about 31, I think. Yeah, I was um, 28. I was going to be 29 shortly. Wow, I would have never guessed either of you are that old. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I appreciate that. Yeah. Seriously, seriously I, I, so I really thought you were. The, it's the Jersey water, really. <laughs> the Jersey water's preserved us. The Jersey and the dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, I'm all about the Jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So let's move on to uh, how was your, your, well, I guess your families were pretty not surprised by you wanting to move to, to Orlando. Or to South Florida, then to Orlando. I think they thought that we were a little crazy at first. You know, I, I had a pretty good job. I had, you know, you know, a lot of experience and history with the company I was with. And it really was not the smartest thing to do in a crashing economy uh, to try to find another position or to, yeah, to leave the corporate headquarters and, and, and try to come down to a place where, I mean, the, the job market in Florida at the time was was not doing that great. So, so that was the first hurdle we had to overcome was actually finding somebody who was willing to to hire uh, somebody during a time of economic turmoil, you know, in a place where jobs were scarce. So so that that they re they took that as a I think the first sign of craziness. But we pursued. We kept uh, kind of talking talking the ears off, and when they kept saying what's going on, and we were always saying, oh, we're you know I'm I'm applying for this job, or I'm trying to find a house down here, or a place to live within our, within our range. I think eventually they just caught on and just started to support us. Mind you, if I can interject, at this point, when we moved down to Florida, actually, we had had a daughter. So about a year, a little over a year after we got married, I gave birth to our daughter and I was at home with her and I started to really delve into the digital marketing sphere where I, previously I had just been in traditional marketing, licensed marketing, brand management. And now I was delving into the digital marketing, marketing sphere, which I can do from my home. Um, and I started building my company, which allowed me to have autonomy, work remotely, which was important in saving money, not only on childcare expenses, but I could also work wherever Phil could get a job. So that actually, that, that kind of, planning and, and working at one dream while trying to achieve another you know one my one dream supported the other dream essentially so the, the odds of us find both finding good jobs down here at the time were very nil so right. eve came up with the idea that she wanted to work for herself and and work from home and that was that's a whole nother accomplishment by itself and dream that was part of the bigger dream right um but we had to take those steps first in order to uh, accomplish what we wanted to accomplish and moreover we had to live on one income because we couldn't rely on mine to support us mine would just kind of be like gravy you know so that one dream buttressed the other one i guess so what steps did you take to get started on your move to get down i know you mentioned that you looked for jobs and you know talking to your families basically started with just a scattering uh, resumes wherever I possibly could, speaking with recruiters and actually accepting a job down in uh, the Fort Lauderdale area uh, with a company I didn't really want to work for. It was the uh, Florida Turnpike. Uh, I had seen the, the rotation. This, this one particular position was always being filled and then constantly being put out there. So I knew it wasn't a great job if nobody wanted to keep it. Uh, so I actually, I had that position. I went in and, and talked to my boss and said, hey, I, I'm going to take this position. I want to move down to Florida. I had been speaking with him previous to this too. And my company had a, an, an office location in Fort Lauderdale at the time, but there was no transfer abilities. He actually did not want to lose me. So he allowed me to transfer instead. Very, very lucky for me uh, that I did because the day that I started work down in Fort Lauderdale, they actually laid off my entire department in New York. So that was incredible timing. The only reason I was actually allowed to stay working with the company is that I had actually taken it upon myself to move and they had no idea I was there. I was actually on the, the layoff list. And when they found out I had already moved down to Fort Lauderdale, they decided to keep me around. <laughs> so that was our first break. Yes. And Phil has impeccable timing. <laughs> 
so that should be noted and that has always been on his side whatever skill set that is or conjures to have good timing he's got that so I, and that happened again yeah and and it did happen again actually uh I guess just about before I would uh, move up to Orlando, I actually requested a transfer because my company had a, an Orlando office as well. They agreed to that. I actually got a better position with a different company. And as soon as that happened, my department got laid off again. So I, I have really good timing in that aspect. And that's where I say <laughs> I'm very fortunate and luck does play a big part of it. But we are also there, thereby mindful of the fact that luck can change at any moment. And because of that, to and I live say, sensibly is, is very important. It is. And I, and I say luck, too. But a lot of it's just seeing the writing on the wall and knowing when when the right time to move is. Yeah, that's, uh, well, I don't want you to work ever work in my department. Because <laughs> <laughs> the moment you leave, I, I guess I'd be looking for another job. It feels <laughs> yeah. like the harbinger of Pete's yeah. <laughs> So what would you say your roadblocks to moving were? Well, I mean, there was just the employment aspect. The other one was finding a, a place that, that we could live at. I mean, Florida's great. I mean, it's a wonderful state, but not all of it's great as far as, I guess what I'm saying, let me back that up to wherever there, the employment areas are, there's great places to live and then there's not so great. And uh, being able to find a place where we could raise our daughters, where the, where the school uh, systems would not be terrible should we decide to go the public school route and still allow us to live the way that we wanted to live. That was our second major hurdle. It, Florida is very diverse. There's a lot of latitude socially. It's almost it's like a, it's a bit like the wild, wild west. So you have to take where you're going to live into consideration with you know, how, how you really want to live, you have to be honest with yourself. And there's a place for everybody here, but you shouldn't live <laughs> just anywhere down here. So we had to, you know, do our research and find out what would work for us. We were really out of our element uh, for a few years once we moved down here. We took a yeah. long time. We knew it was right, but we took a long time to adjust. We didn't know where we fit in, you know. It, it took about two of the th almost three yeah. years that we've been here to adjust. I mean, it's, we've been constantly moving around and, and that actually took a toll on, you know, Eve, myself and our daughter too. I mean, we went on vacation last week and our daughter saw us packing and actually thought we were moving again. So we, uh, and she said, Oh no, I like the house. I said, we're, we, we bought this house. We're staying. We actually bought this, you know, we're not, we're not leaving. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe we have to pay for therapy later. I'm not sure. <laughs> but there, I mean, there was that mental aspect of, you know, having all of your stuff in boxes, knowing that you're not going to be in one place for too long. Not buying furniture, not putting up this or that, not really making a home the way, you know, it makes you feel, feel comfortable. But we believed in ourselves and we knew that the end result was going to be that we were going to end up where we wanted to be. And that kind of drove us to keep going. But, you know, there were a few moments where it wasn't the happiest journey on earth to get to the happiest place. On earth. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you guys do to overcome some of these things other than future dating therapy sessions for your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good question. What, what did we do to overcome? You know, just basically the, mm. the hurdles that we were receiving. I mean, base, I think it was keeping a, a good attitude yeah, constantly right. and just Focus. Well, and truly believing that the situations that we were in, first of all, knowing that the situations that we were in were really not bad at all. It was really just a mental hurdle for ourselves. And knowing that a situation was temporary and just having that mindset that wherever we are, we're there because we put ourselves there. And we did everything by choice. So the fact that we were, I mean, if at, at any time we wanted to, we could have said, okay, well, let's pick this place to live and then we'll settle down and, and, and start getting back on with our lives. But I think just knowing that we were the ones that were in control, I mean, for me anyway, mm -hmm. that was a big part of, of being able to keep going. No, no, that's right. I, I agree. Just keeping the focus. Yeah. Keeping focused. Um, I'm not naturally, I guess, not that I'm not a space cadet. I'm not naturally one of these laser sharp focused people. You can say squirrel. I will look, you know, I just, I, I grew up in that age of where there's just constant stimulation in the internet. So like, for me to really, really focus, this was something that made me focus because I wanted it. And I've never focused so hard on what I wanted and just eschewed everything else that did not have to do with this. You know, like we talk about living below our means. We talk about um, not 
putting down roots just yet because we knew that we wanted to be in the Orlando area. So there were sacrifices there. There were sacrifices socially. Didn't get too close to people who were neighbors, so on and so forth. Didn't have too, too many friends down in South Florida. You know, and, and that's hard. I'm a social person, but also a lot of it, the time was spent, um, you know, working, building my company and doing this or that. So I, I didn't have a lot of time to do that. And so you just got to keep the focus and know that what you're doing was right. And, you know, to some degree, also people saying, you know, what are you doing? Well, what's your fallback plan if the company doesn't work? There really isn't a fallback plan. There is this plan and you have to make it work. You know, you kind of, you don't give yourself the choice, you focus and you realize that in not giving yourself the choice, that is your choice, you know? So it's, it was really hard to keep that focus. It really was. And, and not to do all the things you like to do, like buy furniture for your place because you're just going to pack it up and move. You can ask Phil, do I not say every five seconds, like, God, I just want, I just, I just want to put something up on the wall. I just want these curtains. I just want, you know, uh, I want to do that. And I couldn't do that. Um, so it was hard to to keep that focused, but also, you know, I had to remind myself that I, a lot of the stuff I was complaining about was first world problems. And now I, I kind of feel like I live with much less and much happier, actually having been through that experience. So That's pretty crazy that you, you had to recognize your cons in order to make them into pros. Uh, I love the idea that, you know, this is the plan and, and we're going to make it work. You don't need that fallback because you're going to make it work. You're just going to do it. Yeah, and it was just figuring out how we were going to make that possible. So, for instance, we knew we needed Eve's business to be a work-from-home uh, venture, but we also knew that we couldn't just dump a whole bunch of money into it to do startup. So we had to build very slowly, and that kind of worked out perfectly because it gave Eve a lot of time to actually learn the skills that she would need to do digital marketing. I did a lot of free work. I did a lot of free work for people. So I worked a lot. Mm -hmm. I worked hours. I woke up early. I, I worked late until 2, 3 a.m. after the baby went to sleep, after Phil was sleeping, because he had a normal, you know, 9 to 5 or whatever to get up for. So I did a lot of free work. And I still do a lot of free work. And I don't mind it. I mean, because I like to help other people do what we did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't work anymore at that point. And now I do get paid, but there was a lot of hours of not getting paid. But you knew that it was part of the process. And it was fun. Yeah, as long as it winds up working out for you, that's the important part. <laughs> you can say, you can say all that in hindsight, as long as it worked out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But that's what this podcast hopefully helps people do, to see that, um, to see things through. That will be the result, to just really give it all you got and uh, to believe in yourself and see through. Because there's people out there, and, you know, it's it's a... For some people, they might say, well, what's the big deal? You moved down to Orlando. You did this. You did that. We gave up a lot of comforts. We took a lot of, albeit calculated risks, to get where we were in a relatively short amount of time. But, you know, some people some people don't even, don't even want to dare to dream that. I think that's maybe a lot of what's missing sometimes, I feel, in the world and is just daring to dream that and getting yeah. creative. And I think a, a big part of it is knowing what you want, too. I mean... Mm -hmm. And knowing why you want it is just as important as knowing what you want because it turns out that maybe why you want something allows you to change your end goal because instead of going after something so specific, which, which you have to be specific, but, but maybe that one goal that you thought um, was going to give you what you wanted might not when, once you actually do the math of what it would take to get there. Um, and seeing the alternatives out there you know, I think that allows you to learn a lot more about yourself and a lot more about what you're actually capable of. Uh, before I get into the next question, which is if there's any parts of your dream that haven't quite worked out, how long has the whole journey been to get to Orlando? I'd say almost, I think it took us almost four years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to get down to Florida only took us two years. Right. But then it took almost another you know, year and change to actually get to where we wanted to be. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight, huh? No, no, yeah. definitely not. But I still think it's really, it was really a quick thing. I mean, well, it was, maybe time flew. Maybe I think time like just flew <laughs> because we were so busy. But now, now that when you say it, you know, I guess four years is kind of a long time. But yeah, yeah, it's like it's like having a five year plan, but it built into that big long end goal or many small goals, like we said, that supported our goal. And I think a lot of 
our motivation came from having our daughter living in a way where we could spend as much time together as possible um, and living in a place that we felt comfortable raising her in a way we felt comfortable raising her being an example mm -hmm. and just really you get your you get your stuff straight you know when you have a kid some people right from the get-go they've they've just got it um we had her and it was just it was a big part of it yeah. i mean you know, D disney is probably just the vehicle i mean in reality what we were able to do by coming down here was find extremely affordable housing with um, the area we moved has top rate schools uh and it just seems like it's a great place you know for our daughter fresh to air. grow up fresh <laughs> air um don't get me wrong i, I love new jersey but, right um well, we're living in a city yeah with city prices busyness Pollution. Yeah, and we, and we saw where we'd probably be going if we stayed in, in the exact area that we were in. Um, be house poor. Yeah, so we just decided that we were going to pick up and, and, and do something different. And I think, you know, like I said before, Disney was the vehicle to get us to where we were going. But our end goal was that we wanted a certain lifestyle that we just didn't feel that we could get where we were. Well, you certainly seem like you've gotten it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we de we definitely have. So what parts of your dream haven't quite worked out the way you expected? You know, I mean, it's hard to actually answer that because I think the end result was they actually did turn out how, how you know, as we expected. The the means of getting there definitely didn't work out. I mean, I, I had a lot of prospects in the beginning. Um, I actually made it very far through the Disney interview process. And then it just turned out that um, for that first time back in 2009, um, you know, the salary that was being offered wasn't really going to support our, our way of life. So, so that was not a possibility. We had a whole lot of, of times where stuff was quote unquote in the bag and it just didn't turn out right. houses that we were going to try to move to. Like I said before, there are many positions and I'm constantly looking for opportunities. And actually the company I'm at right now, I actually applied for, I got very far along the interview process uh, and just didn't get the job. I mean, then that was in 2012, uh, didn't get the job, ended up being much better for me in the long run because the person who actually got the job ended up being my mentor because another position opened up at the same company. Uh, I applied and he actually saw potential in me hired me right away, which I would never have gotten that position had I not gotten the job to begin with and not had this person there to be able to see potential in me. You know, there's the, the, the old saying that everything happens for a reason. I don't know if I believe that entirely, but it definitely helps. Right. Yeah, there, there were some there were some dead ends that we just had to accept and uh, go a different way or or just keep trying, keep hammering, keep knocking on the door. It's me again. We're back. <laughs> not going away. You know, and I guess we're both we're both pretty good at that, being persistent, though. And we're both very stubborn and typically a negative trait. But it, it seems it, that we temper it with tact. And so <laughs> we've made it work. Yeah, I think it's knowing when to comp compromise, but being willing to, willing to hold on to that, which you refuse to sacrifice. So what would you say if you were stranded on a deserted island with your family? And each of you had three things. Uh, I know, I know internet, for you it would be internet access. Internet yes. access is exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. It's exactly what I was going to say because then I can order more important necessities like mascara. Like, because obviously. Uh, no, yeah, I would say internet access. I, I don't know. I think I'd want uh, some sort of mechanism to write. So this is a, a journal with a, mm -hmm. ne a pen of never-ending ink and a drum. What? <laughs> We're usually so in sync. I just don't even understand that. Well, that's what, that's why I love you. You're so yeah. surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm going to go with internet access and then I'll make everything else happen. And I'll be internet access, a computer, and something solar powered to continually power my devices. <laughs> Practical. Yes. Uh, as like I said, you know, a, a journal with some mechanism to write. Uh, I think I'd want some sort of a drum. I don't necessarily play the drums, but uh, <laughs> I figured I'd want music, right? And a drum is probably the uh, the I closest thing I'd be able to teach myself how to play. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm I'm still learning the drums. But sitting behind me is the drum set. I know you can't yeah. tell because the reverb coming off of it, so I have it covered with blankets, but. 
Yeah, I mean, I bought a drum to try to learn. <laughs> yeah, don't make yeah, him feel better, Joe. I bought one on a, on a uh, deserted island. It's not like there's going to be a, a a radio or whatever. He wants some music. I provide that service for <laughs> and you. you don't, yeah, <laughs> you don't even know how to play the drum. I guarantee. I give you one hour, and that drum is in the ocean. <laughs> Stop with the drum! We need to get rescued! It's a bongo. I can turn it over and carry stuff. In there. It's the catch. Yeah. But I, I think we would probably um, talk about how to get off the island and, or, or the best way we can make, make it on the island. Mm -hmm. Because like what we did with our dreams and what we do is that we always talk and analyze and are kind of honest with each other. Kind of honest. <laughs> uh, we temper it, but honest with each other where we're at, what we need to do. We need to focus, you know, or, you know, he'll tell me, you know, I see you struggling with this. And we just go back over the, the real philosophical points of what we're trying to do and the actual concrete points of what we're trying to do. Yeah. We, we, we constantly talk about it and assess where we're at. Yeah, along the way, I mean, both of us at multiple times have gone off the rails. And uh, <laughs> just having the other one there to kind of pull us back, I think, has been key to actually making this happen. Let's be honest. I was off the rails more. <laughs> Phil is like you know very patient, so we we play on each other's strengths and we help each other out. That was it was key. We we wouldn't have done it one without the other. No. No. So what would you say your dreams for the future look like? Well, I mean, right now, I'm jealous of Eve. She gets to sleep in whenever she wants to. You know, she does what she, I mean. But that that old saying is, if you do what you love, you never work. And I see that with her right now. I I would like more of the same. I'd like to be able to join Eve in her venture. And I think our joint dream is to build the business up to the point where um, you know, we're not working in a traditional means or fashion anymore. And we're still able to live the lifestyle that we want. That's going to take a, a, a whole lot of work that we haven't even conceived yet. But, you know, we've got the foundation built and, and we're just taking it slow. Yeah, we're, we're, we're working on it. I um, Sometimes I have, you know, my work by nature is not exactly balanced there's some days that i can kind of sleep in wake up do what i need to do um but then i'm working late or i'm working on the weekends or i'm working through vacation we just took a vacation and i did work through vacation you know i of course enjoyed time with the family but because of the nature of my work and how it centers on disney and disney resorts parks and resorts we were at a disney resort so i was a lot of the time you know working on angles um reviewing things, considering uh, what I needed content-wise for website, blog posts, so on and so forth. So there's there's a sacrifice in that. But then there's also, like I said, going to the park and going, oh, wow, what I have to do today is just get these pictures of Star Wars weekends. It's Again, again it doesn't feel like work, though, and I think that's, that's the point. Talking to Doug Barnes about how... I really am enjoying what I'm doing with, with the show, and I, I hope to continue it, and hopefully it will be a full-time endeavor, along with some other things that I have up my sleeve. I don't think I would consider this work. I've always found myself to enjoy doing what I enjoy, <laughs> you know, and, and it doesn't matter whether it's for an hour or three hours. It, it doesn't matter if I'm getting paid or not paid. Yeah, as long as it's fun, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the most important part. You got to find something that you enjoy. And that can be the hardest part. I mean, most people don't know what they want. I mean, that's why we have so many kids in debt from college because they didn't know what they wanted. They listened to what everybody told them. And yeah, exactly. They just kept changing their curriculum over and over and over again. Or they went for a profession that they didn't realize wouldn't support their ultimate goals or support them in a way that they were accustomed to or wanted to live. You have to be real about that. You have to know what you're going to sacrifice and what you can sacrifice. One one common theme on past shows was that dreams cost money. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, they And they do. can take a lot of money, as Walt has said. Yeah, that's, that's, that's 100% true. I mean, some people say, well, what's your dream? Oh, to win the lottery. That's that's a wish. It's not it's not really a dream. I mean, that kind of just happens to you. Dreams. We got to play. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah well that's the thing too you do need inspiration i mean we couldn't live like meisner's in south florida and never take trips up to disney world we had to play and like right now you asked us what 
our next goal was. And certainly we're, we're still working on our goal. It's not like, you know, hey, there's the end of the line. It's actually just the beginning in many ways. But we're also mindful that while we go head forth into the next goal, we take a break and take a breather and, and recharge and refresh and come back inspired before we make another big push to something. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the way it works with us too is we, yeah, you know, like like you said, we hit those plateaus and then the next thing just sort of pops. We don't know when it happens, but something looking. just pops and then Keep your eyes open. yeah, exactly, and then we make it happen. That was right. we used to joke around to say that it, once we vocalized it, then it it had to happen, and that's pretty much been the pattern. Yeah, it's a dangerous thing. <laughs> so, do you have any last thoughts for our audience that you'd like to share? Yeah. <laughs> and when we were done this interview, I'll have even more that I didn't even talk to you about because that's always the way it goes. You know, there's there's a lot of people that are that are going to tell you that you can't because they can't imagine. That's yeah. that's kind of their problem. And yeah. not something you should concern yourself with because it's not something you need to focus on. Yeah, and and you know, honestly, I I think it's just remembering that that life is just magical and there's so much about it that we don't understand so much about our capabilities and how to tap into potential that we just have as a society as a as a, a species we just have have only grazed the surface and just to keep digging around and find those formulas that works for for you and apply them to what you want i mean i think that's that's been our secret yeah live your own dream you know like you said there's many kids in school going for this or that, you know, their parents think they're good at this, their, their teachers think they're good at this, they should do this, this is normal, this is what you should do. You know, maybe stop and ask what you're comfortable doing, what you're comfortable living with, and what you'd be happy doing. And then, you know, make that work. That's yeah, work. You live your own dream. You know? It comes down to, <laughs> you know, to what you're passionate about, I think. Mm -hmm. As long as you have that passion and that desire and that love for something, it, it's going to carry you. You don't know where it's going to end up, and you just have to be willing to to accept a bumpy road along the way. But I truly believe that. Well, is there any Facebook, Twitter, websites you'd like to plug before we depart? Yes, actually, um, it is our baby. It's kind of a passion project, and it's Disney aggregate website, and we promote all your favorite Disney bloggers and websites. It's called monorailmedia.com. And we have original content too, but it's kind of like the daily paper for all your Disney websites. Yep. And at Monorail Media on Twitter. Yes. And Facebook. And Instagram. And I think we're on Tumblr too. I work every angle. I'm out there. Come by me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciated the excitement that Eve had when I told her about this show. Yeah, that was the uh, five hour energy. But no, I am genuinely excited. And I was genuinely excited that you had such a great idea for a podcast. Um, it's inspiring. And we're very flattered that you asked us. And thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's just very inspiring, really. Yeah, and honestly, it's just a, a really cool idea that you had to, to have dream be the topic. And uh, I think we're, we're very uh, happy that you asked us to be a part of it. Well, thank you for being a part of it. It's great to have you on and it's great to learn so much about you guys. Thanks again for coming on the show. And I, I'd like to have you guys on again at some point. That'd be great. You know, six months, a year, and we'll catch up on where you guys have been in that time. Hopefully, Phil doesn't leave a job and then everybody gets fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, okay, now we got to start working on a dream. That's cool. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for actually having this really great idea. I can't wait to share with everyone. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Dreamers Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Dreamers Podcast. Join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash dreamers podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the Dreamers Podcast, please send an email to j at jpar.co. This podcast is copyright 2014 by jpar.co.